everybody and welcome to my sewing room. If you haven't been to this channel before, my name is Rosemary with Enchanting Rosemary Sewing and Embroidery. And every week we try and do something different that has to do with the embroidery sewing machine or on the regular sewing machine or just something crafty and fun. Um, this week what I thought would be fun if we got right back into the design center of the Solaire because we haven't done anything with that on a project. This is mid-August, so we've got holidays coming up real fast here. We're going to have Halloween and Christmas and Thanksgiving. So it might be fun to make a mug rug or a coaster out of some of the designs that, are, uh, that we have picked purchased or picked up in different places or some that you might have in your stash put away somewhere that you haven't done anything with because you weren't sure exactly what you were going to do with it. So we're going to take a design, we're going to put it in the Stellaire sewing machine and we're going to turn it into a mug rug. So let's go to the sewing machine and get started on that. Okay, I'm kind of playing this by ear. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I got a good idea of what I want to do. So I have in my memory on one of my sticks um, some designs. These are new designs that have just come from OESD. So it's nice to have something that you know you can go and find. And this is um, uh, a design that's 51303 from OESD. And I can't even remember, but it's a baby design to make little baby shirts. And some of these are really cute. This little ghost would be absolutely adorable. And so would be the bat. Um, uh, this kitty cat one that's right here says scary cute. I confess I put it in my software and I took that part off because I didn't want that part in here. So here's my kitty cat and um, I'm going to set him down. And I want to make this into a mug rug. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to edit and I'm going to choose the flower. You've seen me do this a whole bunch of times to save the shape of the kitty cat. I'm going to distance that a little bit. One reason I'm going to distance it is because I don't want it to stitch right up against my satin stitching. The other reason is because when I go to turn this inside out, and I am gonna turn it inside out when I make it into a mug rug, I don't want those tight little corners. That's gonna be a big pain in the neck. So um, I am gonna distance it out. I'm gonna put it in the memory and say, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hoop my embroidery design with orange and I actually have some fabric already ready to go, a nice bright batik orange. And I'm gonna embroider this out with a um, applique in black on it. But then I want to be able to sew the back on it so I can turn it inside out. And to do that, I'm gonna push add, and I'm gonna go into my design center. And my design center is going to have that kitty cat, and <laughs> I've saved it a couple of times now. Um, so there he is, I'm gonna say, okay, there's my shape. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tell it to do a reinforcement because I want a really strong stitch that's gonna sew that down. And uh, I can leave it in black, that's fine. Say, okay, pour and tap, that will add the stitches. The other thing is once it sews it around, I wanna leave an opening. I'm gonna have to hand stitch this. I couldn't figure out a way to do it without doing some hand stitching on it other than leaving an opening down the back and I didn't wanna do that. So we're gonna hit plus. Let's move our red box over here. I'm going to hit erase and I'm going to erase an opening here. So the next thing I want to do, I'm going to hit plus again, is I'm going to go into my settings and um, I'm going to choose this r straight running stitch here. And I'm just going to add a little tiny line right here and a little tiny line right here. Let's go back. I just I want that to connect. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want it to sew a stitch so when I cut this out, I have a little tab that I can push down into it to get a nice folded line to hand stitch it close. And I'll show you um, how to do a nice hand stitch close that nobody will ever know that you did it by hand. Um, but that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit minus, minus. Then I'm gonna say next. Looks pretty good, preview, okay. And then we're going to set it down and see it will set down right on top of this so once i've embroidered out my kitty cat then i'm going to lay the piece of fabric over the top and sew that in place so that we can turn it inside out and make it into like a three-dimensional little kitty cat and you could actually stuff it and um make it into a little mini stuffed 
animal or an ornament, but we're gonna make it into a, kind of a, a mug rug or something like that. So let's go into okay. embroidery. It's telling me I made this too big for my five by seven hoop. So I'm gonna have to rehoop that fabric. So I'm gonna come back in a minute and show you it sewing out. So the very first step in this is the applique part. So I'm gonna put the foot down and we're gonna sew the applique outline. Okay, so the next step is to lay down our black. So I've got a nice big piece of black fabric. I'm gonna lay it down to cover the kitty cat completely like that. And I'm still using black threads. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to trim this off before we do the next part. I really like about OESD is that they usually sew it twice and I don't know if you can see this but the second stitching is just a hairs more in to the design than the first one so you know that's going to hold up to whatever you put it through so when I go to get in here with my little tiny scissors and I know you've seen me do this before on appliques you're gonna I'm a lefty so this is not going to be easy for me to to do and let you see what I'm doing. I know, I just said I'm a lefty, but I cut with my right hand. So my right hand's the one that's in the way. So, but anyway, so let's cut this. As close to the stitching as I can possibly get. See the way I'm doing that? You're gonna hold it up, put your scissors flat, and just cut it as close as you can get to that stitching so that when it's satin stitches, it'll satin stitch right up against it. So I'm gonna keep working on this and come back in a second. Okay, so I got that all cut out. You can see the outline of my kitty cat. The next step is to do the white for the little skeleton part. So I've got this threaded with white. I'm just gonna go ahead and push this down and push go and let it sew out the, the skeleton part of the kitty cat. Okay, so this finished sewing out. It did the satin stitch around the edges. I got a few threads here that probably need to be trimmed, but I'll do that afterwards. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take another piece of this fabric and lay it over the top. And then I'm going to take a piece of batting. And this is a fairly thin, warm and natural batting. I just want a little bit of padding. Excuse my hand in the way. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to have to clip it really close to make sure that I can turn it because that's a lot of thickness. So let's go ahead and put the foot down. And I don't know, I've got the camera really close and the hoop's probably going to hit it. So I'm going to just move the camera back just a little bit. Hopefully I won't make you seasick. Um, and I'm going to hit go. going to sew that little notch there and the rest of my kitty cat. I just usually keep my hand on here and smooth as best as I can as I'm going so I don't get any bubbles. and now I'm going to pop it out of the hoop and I need to cut this out and we can just use a good sharp pair of scissors I love these scissors because they have a serrated edge 
and we're going to go around give it about a quarter of an inch you don't want to get too close but you don't want to get too far away because we don't want a lot of bulk in here so i'm going to cut this Okay, so there's my little kitty cat all cut out. Now I'm going to use my sharp scissors and I am going to clip, especially into this part right here, this part right here. Don't cut your stitching, but make sure you cut all those curves because if you don't, this thing is not going to lay flat. So I'm going to go there, there, there. I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to cut these two especially. And I think I want to take away some of the bulk right here. Because we don't really need batting right there. And it's just going to get in my way. Okay, now I'm going to try and turn this inside out by opening it here and start to turn it. So I got it turned, um, and I told you this was just a practice, and as I'm looking at it now, it's a little bit small for a mug rug. I probably should have made it a little bit bigger, but for the most part, it came out really good. I do have to tell you that you need a hemostat, and I love these because they have a big hole right here so my hand fits in it, and I can grab and grip and pull things out. If you put them into something that's hard to turn and grab it and pull it out, you're just going to love them. They're, they're definitely a tool that you need in your sewing room. I press this down and I've got an opening right here. So I'm going to really quickly show you how to do a ladder stitch to close that up so no one can see the stitching. So I'm going to do this with black thread. Of course, you, you would have used like a burnt orange thread or something like that. You're not going to use black thread, but I want you to be able to see where I'm going with this. So I'm going to open it up a little bit and put my needle in the inside and come out into the fold like that. So the, the knot is hidden inside. I'm going to take a stitch sideways like that. I'm going to come straight across from where I was there to here and take another stitch sideways. Let's see if I can turn it. And pull. Now I'm going to come straight across from here to here. And pull and every time you pull the stitch if you go straight across should get lost into that seam now that one was a little bit slanted um, if you go straight across I'm making too big of a stitch too but if you go straight across you should be able to pull until it's completely lost inside of there and the smaller the stitch the more finished it will look I'm gonna pull that good and tight so that the stitches get lost in there so that's how you do a blanket stitch so that it gets complete a blanket stitch. that's how you do a ladder stitch so it gets completely lost in there and it'll close it up okay so that was kind of fun and i have to confess to you that i had no idea what i was going to do when i went to the sewing machine and i just kind of played it by ear and i think we did pretty darn good with it here's the kitty cat and i'll put a little bit better picture up in the corner so you can see what the way he came out i again i think it would be really cool if you decided that you wanted to stuff this and use it for a little stuffing maybe 
really enlarge the size, make it a lot bigger and go ahead and stuff it and put it on your couch for Halloween. But that kitty cat came out really cute. And then as long as I was doing it, I went ahead and I did a few more that were in this embroidery design that I mentioned before. And I'll put it in the description where you can find the OESD design. Um, look at this little turkey, isn't it cute? And I made him a little bigger. He's got some padding in it. You can put him on your coffee table and put um, some cookies on it or a mug or something like that. And then here's that little ghost that I showed you while we were in the menu on the sewing machine. So you can see how cute that came out as three dimensional. And all of them have kind of fun backs on them. This one I did on a, with a solid back, but they're just real fun little three dimensional things. And all three of these are done with an applique design. So you kind of need to find something that's an applique design, but you could also do it with a regular embroidery design. You could um, take something that's supposed to be a Christmas ornament and turn it into something like that. And that would be really fun to do. Um, it's just another idea of something that you can do with all those designs that you have and something really cool that you can do if you have the Stellaire, the Luminaire, or the Dream Machine and you have a design center. So um, that was kind of a quick video. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. I hope you got a little bit inspired to go and start working on something new for the holidays. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.